Hey, what's up guys? We're back again with a new innovative strategy that the number 68 player in the world is using to blast his opponents to bits. While you're spamming goblins and bombers and your opponent has to reset the Inferno Dragon and a Mighty Miner while breaking through a tombstone and the graveyard freeze skeletons are stockpiling all over their tower, their spells will get rapidly released all over the map and attempt to stop you. But they'll never have enough and they'll be throwing fits when you end up getting massive hits. Especially if they have nothing to stop the cheese freeze while the skeletons engulf their tower. But using the double sneaky wing conditions of the Mighty Miner and Inferno Dragon can melt your opponent's towers too. Especially if they feel like they're safe with distractions and then your bomber and arrows speedily stomp their stuff. For two elixir, the bomber gives a high amount of splash damage. And I feel like he's one of the most underrated cards in the game. When you have enough anti-air support with the Inferno Dragon arrows and Mighty Miner ability, the bomber will thrive. It's time to bombard our opponents and assert dominance. Lots of love to everyone that's using Critic Hood Sir Tag to make all the daily videos possible. All right, so Adrian's gonna end up having a Pekka deck if he's actually going to be using the same card that's in his banner. So let's see what's cooking. I'm going to go Bomber in the back and give him the initiative to go and spam me. Generally, when people are up to Elixir, they go and take it to you and spam as much Elixir as they possibly can at the river. But I guess Adrian is built different. He's going to go Dark Prince in the back and play super passive. So we see Electro Wizard and Dark Prince. I think it's going to be Pekka looking at the guy's banner. Again, I mean, it screams Pekka at me. So uh, that's what we're probably playing against right now. If he's going to go for a Golden Eye right now, it could dash on my tower. So I'm just going to go for a Mighty Miner here and say, I don't want to deal with that today. That's not something that I enjoy. So I'm going to go in for Goblins as well. And I believe that the Mighty Miner will not die here without giving us value. I can go in for the Mighty Miner Bomb, go in for Graveyard on the other side, and switch it up and swerve our dude. So I'm wondering if I should freeze. I'm thinking that I probably freeze depending on what happens here. Yeah, I'm going to freeze. It does a lot more damage because he won't have a good response. And I think the Ram Rider is going to get cleaned up by my tower and either a bomber or arrows, depending on what I want to do. So having that initiative of knowing that you're going to do a lot more damage than your opponent is extremely important if you want to maximize your potential on offense with Graveyard Freeze. Graveyard Freeze, if you know that your opponent has four or five cost cards in their deck and they don't have any response to the Graveyard Skeletons that are on the tower, you're just going to get way more damage than any other card that they have because your tower will finish it off, right? His Ram Rider, despite being a lot of Elixir, didn't do near as much as he was hoping for. So I can go in for a Mighty Miner in the back and just see what he's up to. Unfortunately, the Golden Knight did pierce through and hit my tower with an overpowered dash, but, you know, that does happen in Clash Royale. You can't really stop a Golden Knight dash every time you want. I'm going to go for an Inferno Dragon to go and melt the Dark Prince. We're in an even situation from our opponent. He's 100% going to go for the Electro Wizard. I could go for the Bomb and make sure that we can kill the Dark Prince optimally. I don't want to respond to the Dark Prince. So I am going to go for Arrows, and it will get finished off. Beautiful. So if I go in for a Tombstone here, if you can't really hit it with a spell, and we should be able to finish off everything that he drops. Also, if you guys didn't know, you can go in for Goblins here, and the Golden Knight will not dash under your tower in that situation. That's something that most people do not know, but the Golden Knight will only dash onto one of the Goblins there if you drop the Goblins directly behind the Golden Knight. Golden Knight glitch, glitched out or something, and that's the most optimal placement, and it saved me because I didn't have much Elixir, and that was the only possible response that I could have done. The Mighty Miner is going to swerve everything that he has, and it's going to go on the other side. I think that we can go in for Goblins here, and then maybe go in for a Bomber, and probably defend both towers with double Tombstones. It's one of the weirdest and wackiest defenses I've ever done. Okay, can that not dash on my tower? That's crazy. That's actually insane. It literally dashed all around the map. That was the most ludicrous Golden Knight dash I've seen in a while. All right, 14 seconds remaining. It's obvious to me that I want to go in for a freeze on defense here because I probably am able to take out his tower. And if I can just get back to a tombstone, the Dark Prince isn't going to do enough damage. And with two seconds remaining, we are going to run away with the victory. <laughs> that win was the ultimate heist. I only had 200 HP on the tower and 600 on the other with a Dark Prince ready to maul me. Beating the player with Mother Witch when you've got Graveyard is always a fantastic feeling, especially when you catch a close W in a win like that. And now we're top 7,300 in the world. Yo, this guy is already judging me with this clan and I don't know how I'm supposed to feel about that. So I'm gonna go for Tombstone for three Elixir and yep. You know, I'm judging our predicament too. We're currently down one elixir because wall breakers are overpowered when you split them up in the middle. The great thing about our situation, he just cycled archers. Most likely his best answer to our graveyard, right? So if the archers are out of cycle, we gotta take our moment and seize the day. We're gonna go for an Inferno Dragon here so then the archer doesn't lock onto my bomber. We're gonna eat the damage from the archer on the other side and we're gonna immediately graveyard and catapult our stuff directly in this man's face. So fantastic freeze for me, I believe. I mean, we're forcing out a miner. Maybe the Inferno Dragon can lock onto the tower. The skeletons are surrounding and pounding. And look at that value. So definitely do have to go in for goblins here. 
<laughs> Not a fan of that, man. Not a fan of that. I'm going to go in for arrows as well, so maybe we can damage down the entirety of the Mighty Miner. Did not work out. So I have to spend even more Elixir. But fantastically, the Bomber is back in business, baby. Two Elixir, absolute hero. Wow. That thing just baited out his entire bank. He went in with a Mighty Miner ability and goblins and wasted three Elixir into a two Elixir cost card. And I killed the Mighty Miner, which was also four Elixir. So basically what I'm trying to tell you is I got seven worth of value out of a two Elixir card. <laughs> wow, Bomber, you steal the cake right now, bro. So maybe we can go in for, I don't know, a graveyard? He, he probably is going to go in for archers, so I don't want to do that. I want to have arrows in cycles so then I can immediately eviscerate them. So I'm going to Mighty Miner in the back and build up enough of an elixir to do that. Generally, what I like to do is I want to get like an Inferno Dragon or Mighty Miner on a tower if I want to really cheese my opponent. So I'm going to Inferno Dragon off to the side, and then I have plans of arrowing his archers immediately. So then the Inferno Dragon hopefully locks onto the tower. Great goblins from our opponent. Genuinely, like, fantastic play from him. Dropping the goblins up top. And then they still went back. They went back to defend the Graveyard Skeletons. Wow, that was so well played. I wonder if the Inferno Dragon is able to lock onto the tower if I'm lucky. I'm going to Tombstone early on so that I can protect ourselves from Mighty Miner Wall Breakers. Wherever he drops the Wall Breakers, we should be in a good spot. I'm going to slow roll another Inferno Dragon so then we can build up a huge Elixir advantage. So he can't apply aggression while the Tombstone's on the map, right? It's just feasibly impossible for him to do that. If I Mighty Miner in the back, I think that's also good, but it's genuinely just better to go in for a freeze and then also a graveyard. So I'm going to do that instead. We're going to freeze pretty much early on and then wait for him to go goblins and then we're going to arrows on top of the archer and the goblins and the tower and everything. And then the Inferno Dragon's going to just kill the Mighty Miner. Wait, he had to drop a Mighty Miner in front of his tower. That's how much he was freaking out about the situation. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, man. Maybe his idea of hilarious is a little bit different than mine, but this is divine. So we're going to go in for goblins here, and then we're going to go in for a Mighty Miner, and then I'm going to go for arrows just to make sure that nothing actually reaches my tower. He's going to pre-log and drop his entire Elixir Bank. Unfortunately, he does have poison in his deck, so that is a little bit bad for me, but it is what it is. I'm going to go in for a Bomber with a Graveyard, and then probably get goblins out of him, which the Bomber should kill, and then that'll be pretty funny. I'm going to go in for a Freeze, and then I'm going to go for arrows as well, play really aggressive here. The Mighty Miner on the other side might take out the entire tower. I don't know if it will. Oh, yeah, it does. <laughs> All I have to do is go in for a freeze and arrows and I walk with a win. It's beautiful, baby, and you'll love to see it. So I'm going to go in for a freeze here to guarantee that the bomber and everything can clean it all up. And then I'm not going to throw the game. It's just pretty important that we don't throw. So I'm going to follow up with the arrows, make sure that we can go in for like a tombstone here, whatever we need to. And then, uh, yeah, he's not going to be able to break through. There's nothing he can do. We're going to go in for a graveyard here. We're going to follow up with a freeze and we walk away with a very dominant display. This is the way that we like to play. So thank you, sir. I appreciate you donating your trophies or I guess your medals in this ranked game mode to me. And uh, you're fighting on for dear life, but the fight is over. The arrows are going to pierce your heart, your soul, your towers, and we're going to steal all of your medals. And after that one, you know, I think the man is probably going to judge this game a little bit because he had minor poison with archers and goblins, and he still wasn't able to counter graveyard freeze. Back to back, completely crushing counter decks. Minor poison with archers and goblins, and mother witch when we're running graveyard freeze feels so freaking good. And now now we're at 6,400 in the world. We've got another victim. And this guy has giant skeleton in his banner. It seems like a lot of people right now are playing cards that they have in their banners. So we'll see if he's going to be running giant skeleton clone or maybe like a giant skeleton hog rider earthquake deck or maybe just something completely different as we see a magic archer. So I'm going to inferno dragon here so he can't go and snipe my tombstone. Pretty important that that thing does not get dug a grave because then it would be pretty great for me because he could go in for a win condition, right? Okay, I think that the Tombstone is going to be able to counter the Bandit, so I don't have to spend any extra Elixir here. I am going to go in for a Bomber just in case he goes in for a Zap or something, because I might be able to activate King Tower with the Bomber in that placement. Okay, I'm going to go for a Graveyard really aggressively with my Bomber, and then I might go in for Goblins here just to completely counter the Battle Ram. If I can freeze on the Electro Wizard and also the Royal Ghost, that is a monumentous value. The Bomber splashed onto the Electro Wizard too, I'm pretty sure. Maybe that was just Skeleton damage, but that's ridiculous. We're currently up 1,300 damage, and you love to see it. I can confidently go in for a Mighty Miner right now because his Electro Wizard is out of cycle. So the only possible reset he has is maybe going in for, like, the Bandit Dash or maybe, like, I don't know, a Zap. No nothing really makes sense, though. He's probably going to go Bandit if I had to guess, like, last second. Oh, he's going to P.E.K.K.A. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Watch how much damage I'm about to get here. No Electro Wizard. <laughs> this is the most dead P.E.K.K.A. you will ever see in your lives. Oh my goodness, this is hilarious. I love it. The Pekka doesn't even like cross the river. It's just dead before it even reaches. Dead on sight. 
We can go in for a bomber here. We can also go in for a tombstone and be okay. I'm dropping it slightly lower so the magic archer can't immediately lock onto it. As long as the bomber dies, we're chilling. Uh, or sorry, not the bomber, the bandit. Uh, we can go in for a mighty miner, and then we can go for a graveyard, depending on what happens. I think it's worthwhile for us to do this, because even if he goes in for Electro Wizard, he should probably take a lot of damage from the bomber. The bomber is going to do a lot of work. I'm going to arrows here immediately so I can get some extra value, potentially kill the Electro Wizard, then the bomber can lock it on the tower. Look at how good this deck is. It is so unfair. Bomber is underrated right now, underappreciated. The amount of damage you do for two Elixir is crazy, right? It's just something that people need to start playing more often. You have splash damage, and you have that ridiculous potential of splashing onto your opponent's units near the tower, and then also getting tower damage. Like, it's just out of this world broken when you've got freeze. We're going to go in for the Inferno Dragon here, a bomber. He's probably going to go Magic Archer, which is totally fine. I think I go in for Mighty Miner here to make sure that he can't get the trade that he wants. We're going to get him to Fireball, then we're going to go in for Goblins, and then probably Freeze. If we can just stop the Electro Wizard, we're fine. The Mighty Miner is so smart, though. It's going back. It knows what it wants in life. It's just like, Jake, I refuse to let you lose. And even though the Electro Wizard is able to reset everything, it doesn't matter that much. With 16 seconds remaining, I'm just going to go for a Bomber here, go for a Graveyard, and say, Sayonara to my opponent's tower. He hasn't even scratched the surface of my tower. This guy is ranked at the top of the world. And, you know, at the top of his list of banned cards is probably Graveyard Freeze after this one. He literally did 300 damage to my tower, and he was one of the best players in the game. After continuing the win streak, we're top 5,400 in the world. Yo, we have finally achieved an ultimate challenge. This guy has a 650 in the world finish. So he's going to be one of the best players we're going to play against all day. We're going to go in for the tombstone here, pull the wall breakers, and, you know, it's familiar frontier. We played against someone earlier with an overpowered minor wall breakers mighty minor deck, and our mighty minor deck stole the chance of him winning the game, right? So hopefully the Mighty Miner can rinse and repeat the same transaction that it had last time. I'm gonna go Goblins in the middle, so then if he goes and clicks the Mighty Miner Bomb, it's not gonna be super scary for me. I think that we just go and pull it with another Mighty Miner and say, yo, meet your brother, a family reunion of pure pain. So maybe we can go for a graveyard. I don't know if it's the right play, but I want to. I could go for a graveyard. I could also freeze. There's a lot of things on my list to do. Yeah, I think I'm going to go in for the Mighty Miner ability here and then not do anything else. I think it's just better to do that. Maybe force him to go for archers or freak out. Uh, I was hoping he'd go for archers on the left-hand side and then I could arrow them. But, you know, oh, he, he did it. He actually listened to me. I don't know if he's, like, listening on the other side. Or are we playing a big game of telephone out here? What's going on, man? I appreciate it, though. I respect it. I love the fact that you gave me a positive elixir trade. I dislike the fact that I'm spending a lot of elixir here, and I dislike the fact that the Mighty Miner Bomb kills a bomber, bro. That's not how it's supposed to work. The bomber is supposed to be immune to the bomb. It's, it's supposed to be better for him, you know? He's supposed to be like the avatar of bombs. Ah, it's unfortunate, to say the least. I think we go in for the Mighty Miner ability, we go for a graveyard, and then we probably go in for a freeze, depending on what happens here. He's gonna go archers or poison. Yeah, not good. I mean, I could freeze, but I don't think it's worth it. Uh, maybe it would have been. It's hard to say, to be honest. Then I might not have been able to afford the goblins immediately. So that's the issue for me. I was like, you know, the wall breakers would have connected to my face and that would have done a lot more damage. He's probably going to go for archers here. So I want to go in for an infer dragon and then arrows them whenever they get dropped. There they are. It's just very obvious because that was the only card he had available. I can go in for a tombstone here, or I could have also bombered. There's two different chances of defending this. I think going in for the uh, bomber on defense against the goblins is definitely better because it's going to yield a good defense against the miner as well. So for two elixir, you guys already know, I'm about that value out here. The fact that we're getting this matchup multiple times in a row just makes me sad because, you know, <laughs> I beat it the first time, but it's really not an easy matchup. I'm going to go for a Furnace Dragon here. I can go for an Arrows on top of the... Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to go for an Arrows here. Just to be able to kill that a little bit faster. He's going to try to cycle back to like multiple sets of archers or something, but not super scared about it. Maybe we can go for a freeze. Maybe the Mighty Miner can lock it on the tower. We're already back to another set of arrows. Wait, am I am I going to be able to beat someone with a hard counter again? Like, this is just crazy. I'm going to click the Mighty Miner ability so that I can blast the bits, whatever wall breakers are he's going to drop. Yeah, I was hoping the Inferno Dragon would lock it on the tower, but for one elixir, I got such good value there. With the Mighty Miner getting the death damage or the bomb on the tower, it's always worth it. Always, always worth it to click it for one elixir if you're not going to be able to get the Mighty Miner on the tower already. Like, if it's barely going to ramp up and do damage, just click the bomb for one elixir and you're going to get a good trade. I don't know why he's doing that. It doesn't make sense for him to poison. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to go and collect my free damage. I'm going to go in for arrows here, and then I'm going to go in for a freeze slightly later. He's going to go for goblins. That's the only thing he has to defend, but he's probably dead. I just don't think he played very well. 
It's, it's interesting, you know, like playing against these top ladder players that finish like 500 in the world or whatever, they don't always play perfectly. You think everyone in the game always plays perfect, but there's so many opportunities to punish people. So even if you get a bad matchup, never get too down on yourself. People will make mistakes. You can capitalize on it and beat them every single time. Unless you're like top 200 in the world where everyone plays like a computer, but there's very few people like that. Just taking a look at this guy's profile for proof, he finished 650 in the world at over 2,700 medals. And he was running a counter deck to me and we utterly destroyed him. We are rushing our way up the ranks at 4,500 in the world. All right, so this guy's gonna have a peck in his mastery. Most of the time when people don't actually level up their mastery of a certain card and they have it in their banner, they won't be playing it. So sir, you don't have P.E.K.K.A. And now there's like 100 other cards you could be playing. So I still don't have a clue. I'm gonna go for goblins here, and he's gonna go for a bar barrel. I think I want to go tombstone so it doesn't get a single shot on my tower. Please, no, 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 no! He's laughing at me with a goblin grooving emote. That's okay, man. It happens. I wish that that didn't hit my tower, but I was a little bit too slow with my tombstone. You know, the skeletons needed to die faster. They needed to get reincarnated as skeletons quicker, so they were able to tank for me. But I guess it just wasn't in their DNA. I'm gonna go for a graveyard here because I feel comfortable doing it since I had so much elixir. I can go in for a freeze, the skeletons are going to swarm him, and then I can go in for the Mighty Miner Bomb to guarantee that we kill the cannon cart. So it seems worthwhile, right? Oh no, dude. Every interaction wants to troll me today. I see how it is. The Inferno Dragon needs to lock onto the cannon cart if I have any hope of defending this, but it doesn't really look like that's going to happen. He's going to click the Golden Knight Dash most likely. Really? Okay. Yeah, I was wondering why you weren't doing that for a second. I was like... You know, you had the perfect lineup. He's giving us the yawn. He must be really tired or something, guys. Definitely not such an easy situation for him. So uh, if I get into this placement, I, I want to go in for a bomber in the middle because it's going to be a cost-effective trade on defense. It will shut down the Electro Wizard. I'm in a very bad spot, but I believe I can bounce back. I mean, this deck has worked really well for us earlier today, so I, I don't believe that it would disappoint me now when we need it to. We need it the best possible cycle here. We need the best possible plays only. So he's going to go Magic Archer. We can go and blast that to Oblivion. Then go in for a Graveyard on the other side. And then also maybe even go in for like a Tombstone or Arrows actually. I think Arrows is better because he's not going to be expecting it. He's expecting me to probably defend that a little bit more. And I, I have no intents of doing that. I'm going to go for a Freeze when we have two Skeletons on the map. I think they might take out most of his tower. Kind of a crazy position for us to be in, but... I'm liking it, you know? We can ignore the majority of the Royal Ghost. It doesn't matter that much to me. I can go in for a Bomber here and finish it off. And you know what? I'm going to mute him. He's yawning a little bit too loudly for my liking. Probably going to go for like a Barbarian Barrel here or something. And we make the prediction. We drop our Goblins a little bit lower so he doesn't hit what he wants. And we're going to go in for another Graveyard here in the right-hand side. And the reason why I like Graveyard in the opposite lane right now is our tower is so low. So anything that he drops on defense isn't going to be going towards the tower that he wants to. So see, he's defending with the Golden Knight. He's defending with Royal Ghost. These are cards that I don't have to worry about since I have a very healthy tower in the right-hand lane. So I can go for a Bomber in the back, and if he goes and clicks the Golden Eye Dash, another thing that you guys might or might not know, he'll dash directly on the tower, but he won't actually be able to hit the Bomber behind it. I'm going to go in for Goblins here, and I think that we're going to be okay if I go in for just a pretty passive play of going in for a Mighty Miner here. Yeah, the Mighty Miner should clean up on everything. And then I'm going to go in for the Bomb, I'm going to go in the other side, and then I'm going to go in for a Freeze so we can guarantee that the Magic Archer doesn't hit us. Meanwhile, the Inferno Dragon and the Rampage on the right-hand side ran rampant. And this guy, you know, he's pretty silent at the end when he lost. Feels good, man, to bounce back and destroy dirty BMers. When people are bad manner and think they've won, giving you the easy yawn, there's nothing more satisfying than coming back and crushing them. Like, subscribe for more daily videos, and have an incredible rest of your day.